Well, hi everyone, I'm John McElroy. I'm one of your hosts for the Florida Aviation Network. And we are broadcasting live and in the clear from the Aerospace Discovery here on the Florida Air Museum campus at uh, Lakeland, Florida. The 44th annual Sun and Fun Fly-In and Exhibition is being uh, just completely blown out with a beautiful day here in Central Florida. It is an unbelievable uh, experience to be here. If you're a pilot or even interested in flying, you've got to be here. It's spring break for pilots in Central Florida today with a beautiful day. Uh, the winds are light, the sky is as blue as can be. Uh, you can hear the airplane noise in the background of the set right here. And we are meeting some of the most interesting people. So uh, the, our next guest is Joe Carabench with missionaryPilots.org, uh, right? I mean, Missionary Flights Fli International. Missionary Flights International. Thank you, Joe. I, I apologize. And, uh, but I'm so glad to kind of get to meet you and get to know you and, and learn about your mission. And uh, I do know a little bit about it, uh, but I'd like to hear from you. Take it away. I mean, this is a forum for you to tell us and all of our viewers what's going on out there. Well, it's great to be here. And uh, Missionary Flights International started uh, 54 years ago. Wow. Um, about nine months before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it started with one man and one small airplane uh, in South Florida, and uh, he uh, was flying to the Bahamas to lead these Youth for Christ rallies, uh, bringing the Jesus film over there, and missionaries that he was working with over in the Bahamas said, hey, next time when you come, uh, can you bring this? Can you bring that? Yeah. Uh, and they needed supplies and little things here and there. And that's where it started back in 1964 on Valentine's Day. Wow, wow. So. Talk about a gift of love, you bet. That's a great segue into uh, the mission that's, uh, that's created today. H has it changed from that, you know, that nugget of, of uh, you know, a message and, and a mission for supplies? I mean, what's going on with that today? Well, it's, it's basically the same, but it's gotten a lot bigger. Planes have gotten bigger, went from small uh, single engine planes to twin engines to beach 18s. Uh, now we're flying uh, DC-3s, and when I started with Missionary Flights 22 years ago, um, we had four DC-3s that we operated, uh, the old radial engine DC-3s, but currently um, we're operating two turboprop DC-3s. They've been converted and have modern uh, Pratt & Whitney PT-6 turbines, and uh, it's a, a great uh, addition to the plane and a modification that just makes things a lot better. We can talk about that. Um, but our, our main purpose, or our mission actually, is to uh, spread the good news of Jesus Christ uh, in partnership with Bible-centered missions but pro by providing two things, reliable transportation and logistical services. So the transportation comes from the plane, obviously, yeah. uh, and the logistical service can be anything. We do a lot of purchasing for the missionaries right. and running around here in the States. And our, our main focus is uh, the island of Hispaniola, made up of two countries, Haiti, Haiti and Dominican Republic. You get an A for your geography lesson. Been there. So, yeah. And uh, I understand the need. Then, if you're ever in Fort Pierce, by the way, uh, you know, you can see those beautiful DC 3s with the uh, turbine engines. There's nothing like the sound of a PT 6 rotating, and you kind of look over and go, What's that <laughs> doing on a DC 3? <laughs> yeah. Well, th these two turbine DC 3s are doing as much, if not more, work than the four radial engines DC 3s used to do. Because there was always something wrong with, you know, the plane. They're always down for maintenance or waiting on an engine to be overhauled. Sure, or the jug or whatever. Yep. Now, uh, you don't, we don't have not really hung out together. And we're getting to know each other live on camera here. But I just want to tell you a quick story because I'm an old cargo dog out of Miami, you know. And I used to watch you guys out and uh, in the islands. I, I flew to the Bahamas as well in a diamond plate plated floor. Uh, 402 you know so I am well versed in in what it takes to to take a, a piece of equipment out into the out islands and yeah. so uh, what you're talking about just so you know you're, you're talking to a brother here <laughs> it, it, that's uh, been there and done that as well so well, it's interesting uh, we have more in common than I, I realized because I used to fly 402s yeah um, up in uh, Massachusetts before I came to missionary flights in the the mid 90s, I flew uh, for Cape Air and Nantucket Airlines. That that show that they did the uh, the sitcom uh, sure. Wings. Wings, right? So I always I'm saying I'm the original Joe because he was the main character flying those planes around. Well, I was in a B model like the like the one you see on that show, <laughs> and I think you guys were in the C models and a little we bit. We had one B model. One B, right? The rest were C's. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so. Uh, you know, I would love to have my own personal one. That would be great. It can it'd be um, just uh, real fondness for that 
that sort of opportunity to fly out there. So, um, all right, now we've got these, these uh, pieces of great equipment to deliver out there, and we've just come through a huge uh, uh, hurricane scenario with uh, Irma that just came through. So um, I know for a fact people called me up looking for uh, an option on the aircraft that I fly now, but uh, I steered them directly to you, and I know you probably haven't stopped since, right? Well, we continue to do our normal work, but yeah, these last three years have been really active. We had Hurricane Joaquin come through the Bahamas uh, three years ago. Uh, then the next year we had Matthew that came right, the eye went right across the southern tip of Haiti. It sure did. And then through the Bahamas. Uh, we uh, flew about 125,000 pounds to the Bahamas and then uh, purchased 125,000 pounds in the capital city of Port-au-Prince and shipped that out to the southern peninsula. And then last year with Hurricane Irma and Maria that came through uh, the Turks and Caicos in Puerto Rico, we did a lot of flights out there, and those flights to Puerto Rico were long. Oh, yeah. Well, we weren't even allowed to go back. You know, uh, uh, we, they begged us to get into, uh, uh, we couldn't go. We just weren't allowed to go back because of the infrastructure. But you guys went, you know. I always think about that. Um, I think about it from the logistics standpoint of, of, you know, being a pilot of that aircraft because, <laughs> I don't know, I just have that heart uh, feel for what's going on, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, the aircraft that we have, you know, the turboprop conversion is just amazing. Um, the plane uh, goes faster. They got those turboprop engines and we climb up. We usually head down about 11,000 feet and come back at 12,000 feet from the islands. And uh, the plane goes 200 knots compared to about 150 knots. That's amazing. So a 50 knot gain. Yeah, 20% improvement in performance. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, they're, uh, they can carry more weight because when they took off the old heavy engines, the radial engines, they were about a thousand pounds heavier than the new engines. And so wow. the plane actually became too tail heavy and they had that? to rebalance it by lengthening the whole fuselage. So they lengthened it 39 inches. So now there's actually more room inside. How about so that? you can carry more weight, you can wow. fit more weight, wow. you can go faster. It uses the jet fuel, which is cheaper um, and more readily available in the Caribbean. Right. There hadn't been avgas available in the north part of Haiti where most of our flights go into every Tuesday and every Thursday. And so we in a time when we were transitioning to get the turboprop uh, planes, we had to carry extra fuel to get into Haiti and then up to the Turks and Caicos Islands. And so cut into our, our load and uh, made it more time. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in and ask if you could uh, uh, put leave 175 pounds uh, on the ground for one of those flights and let me come along. <laughs> Uh, we're you know, sure. We'll yeah, get you on I, there. I think I'd like to check out what's happening these days and see where you guys are going into. And uh, you know, I spent time in the DR and and I know it well. And uh, La Romana and and uh, uh, Port Port-au-Prince and you know the, all the airports down there. We serve those clients as well. And um, uh, so I, I'm more familiar with the east side than I am on the west with uh, uh, Haiti as you are. But you know, there's a lot of need down there. And and. And you're talking about a lot of Christian families out there, too, that are just uh, as poor as can be, yeah. you know. Well, there are uh, almost 500 Christian mission organizations that we serve. So we are providing them with air service, with, with mail, with cargo, and with uh, transportation of their work teams. So about 3,000 people a year travel on us to do short-term mission projects. And, that, and that's the only, that's, uh, you got to know. This, when this plane arrives, it's like literally heaven sent. You know, that's where they get their stuff from. It's how they get there. It's how, you know, it's their lifeline to what's going on. Yeah, they don't have Walmart and Sam's Club on no, the no, street no. corner no. Um, or even auto parts. Yeah. So we're able to support the missions there to keep their vehicles running, the people running. Uh, that's what I did mostly. It was yeah. car parts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it turned out to be car parts and engines. You yeah. Know? And you learn where the engine sits best for the best performance and you learn where it shouldn't sit. <laughs> for the for the worst performance. Yeah, and one of the airports we go into, which is where most of our passengers go, is uh, the center of Haiti. It's a grass airstrip that we land, and the DC-3 is great for that. It's a tail dragger, got those big balloon tires, and uh, we go in there about five times a month, bringing in supplies, medical teams. There's a hospital there, and and you can't get there too easily by road. Um, from the north part, uh, the closest international airport, Capetian. It's about three and a half hours, and it's some of the worst roads in the world, and there's three rivers to cross, uh, and no bridges. So if it's been raining a lot the night before- They have to carry it across. They, and, yeah, or they just or can't go. They or can't they, go. I've heard yeah. of uh, vehicles being floating down the river because oh my gosh, they, they tried, tried to. to do it. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. they created a worse scenario. Yeah. Well, 
how about that? Um, hey, let's back up a little bit. Let's go back to the beginning of, of uh, not, not quite uh, the organization, but you know, when did you start flying and what was that all about? Tell me. Um, well, I started flying um, after I finished college. I had uh, actually, when I was young, um, I, I uh, was exposed to the knowledge that Jesus Christ was the, the Savior who died for me and I made him Lord of my life. I wanted to follow him. I wanted to do uh, good. I wanted to teach other people about Jesus. And so I didn't see myself as a, a preacher or a pastor, but I, I saw myself really loving mechanical things. Uh, enjoyed working on cars and taking apart my clock radio and connecting <laughs> up this big woofer to it. I'm and, geek like that. Yeah, and had my phone connected to it. And uh, could have, I had one of my first homemade uh, speaker phones. But anyways, um, I heard that you know you could become a me mechanic and a pilot and, and help support the mission work and so that's uh, what I eventually did after college I applied to Moody Bible Institute to their missionary aviation program where they train specifically uh, uh, pilots and mechanics uh, most uh, missionary pilots are also rated A&P mechanics and so I did that training uh, back in the late 80s uh, and then that was prior to us moving to Cape Cod where I, I worked for the uh, for Cape Air yeah. and flew up there but it was in 1996 that we came down at Missionary Flights. Um, came as a pilot mechanic, and shortly after that, um, they asked me to work in the, the warehouse because we had our warehouse guy uh, retiring, and said, oh, you can still fly, but, but uh, instead of working on the planes, we need you to manage the warehouse. And then when we got a, a warehouse manager uh, the next year, they, they said, well, we really need help in the office. So the president said, can you be my executive assistant? And so I started doing that, later became the vice president, and then three years ago, um, I actually assumed the role of president of Missionary Flight. Wow, congratulations. That's quite the story. And um, you still get to go fly? Yep. Still, still fly a couple times a month. Awesome. Uh, but not, not all the time. Yeah, no. So it's there's, just, there's a lot of paperwork to when do. When you need to get out. <laughs> yeah. Well, wonderful, wonderful. And so um, I would love to hear about your team then. You know, if you're at the tip of the pyramid uh, in terms of, of mission, vision, and values, you know, who's underneath you spreading that message and how are they going about doing that? Well, we've got a great team. We've got a total of eight pilots who are also mechanics. We've got a couple guys that are maintenance specialists. We have uh, some uh, four ladies in the office that take care of reception and, and, and the donations that come in. We have uh, uh, a horde of volunteers. You know, we could not operate without the volunteers. Guys, we got some guys that are retired aircraft mechanics from KLM and they come and they, they volunteer. We've got another group that come every Monday and every Wednesday to help us load the planes. We, we don't have the flights on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so Monday and Wednesday are busy. Yeah. We're hand loading everything. Yeah. Um, well, we do have a forklift sure. to bring it up, but, but yeah, we're once packing. it gets to that door, yep. it's you know we pack this it. It goes to there, yep. <laughs> and that's that's the end of the resemblance. We we pack it in the nets. Um, to it's like making a puzzle, yeah. a three dimensional puzzle, to getting everything to yeah. fit, um, and then depending on how many. Uh, work teams are going down you know we've got uh we can put no seats in we can put two seats in we can put 25 seats yeah. in they actually can carry up to 32 but you know we'll take one or two planes depending on how how much load we have um and we we fit it in and coming back the plane may be reconfigured we might take a whole plane of cargo down and then on the way back we've got some seats that we set up and, and yeah. we bring a load of people back so is it is it uh med flight two as well you know so some some ill folks and you know we have we're not an official medevac yeah. Yeah, but, but um i mean we've taken i've taken people back myself uh, one uh doctor's wife who actually been shot five times wow my goodness uh, we had this one little girl eight-year-old uh brooke uh, Rauschenberger, she was riding her bike in the wrong place at the wrong time. Oh, and a truck ran hit. ran over, Ugh. crushed her pelvis. They didn't yeah. think she was going to live through the night. My goodness. But we flew down in a smaller plane. We have a Cessna 310. Yeah. We can put a little stretcher in there. And, and we flew down at night because uh, the, and tr landed there at daybreak. There's no runway lights. Right, it's all So dark. we can't, we can't yeah. land till daybreak. She made it through the night. We loaded her on the plane and then flew back. And the, again, the doctors don't know why she survived. But they got her back, did emergency surgery, and she's riding her bike today. And oh, she's actually graduated kind of from stories. graduated from uh, uh, high school and college too. So. Wow! 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 Yeah, love that kind of story. You know, that's the that's the magic of flying. You know, that's the kind of difference you can make. You know, so uh, underneath of underneath of the uh, senior management, you said there's a, a team of pilots, and and they are the mechanics, and then uh, there's the office staff. So. But then there's the logistic angle you were talking about, right? So you were that warehouse manager, and you said that that's twofold. So now take me take me off the uh, ramp side or the air side, and you know get me on the ramp and outside the fence and into the warehouse. 
and where, do, how does that work and where is that going? Well, we are actually the largest recipient of mail in the city of Fort Pierce. Wow. And so we get, you know, a truck shows up and all these mail pack and packages and letters get there. We have a room that has 500 mailboxes, just like a small town. Um, and so we sort all the mail, uh, packages come in, they're um, checked into our system. We open them up, we identify the contents. Uh, we put information into our computer with a tracking number, who it's to, who it's from, how much it weighs, what it is wow. and the value. And then uh, customs documents are produced from that. Uh, and it all gets put on shelves in different cities Amazing. so we know where they're going. And then when we have our flights, then we know which cities we're going to. Now see, we go to the northern part of Haiti every Tuesday and Thursday. We go to the capital city of Haiti, Port-au-Prince, every Thursday. Then we do go to the Dominican Republic every other Tuesday. And so there's always different cities. And so we go, oh, how much do we have here? How many people are on board? And how much is their baggage going to weigh? And what do we have left over? There might be two or 3,000 pounds on this plane and 1,500 pounds on the other plane. And so we then look in our computer and find out how much weight we have. And then we, we produce a list. And volunteers are there to help check it off and keep track. And they get loaded on pallets. And then they move out to their hangar and they get loaded on the plane and all strapped down and ready for the next day and then we take off early in the morning get it going on yeah. i love it wow so um, are uh, a lot of this donations uh that's coming through or or is it a uh, uh you know i'm just trying to figure it, how do people support that i mean uh, there there's definitely a, a contributing arm to this yeah so tell well it's a, a combination um a lot of things that we take uh, I would say most of them are items that either the missionaries have ordered through us and we've gone to pick them up locally. Um, you know, whether it's an ATV vehicle or a generator or, or yep. just frozen, was, uh, frozen turkey. 20 <laughs> generators, that's what I was asked to take down. I said, no, 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 okay. no, that's gonna be uh, these guys. Yeah, yeah. but um, so maybe stuff that we've picked up or it's stuff they've ordered online with Amazon. Yeah. Um, that shows up or eBay. Um, or it could be they're supporting people, they're supporting organization or supporting churches that have sent things uh, to our um, address. And if it's got the proper name and uh, an identifier on there, we know what city and what country to ship it to. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, the, but there are donated supplies that people give to us locally. And let's, I mean, there's uh, a couple of pallets of, of, of bed sheets that I think they came from a hospital and they didn't, they were getting new ones yeah. or something. and. Things like that or, or other equipment that shows up or uh, fabric from a fabric shop that um, they're getting new stuff, they get donated to us. Then we put stuff out in emails and we're working on getting a website where the missionaries can look and see, hey, what do they have that I can just have? Yeah. And so they end up helping with the cost of getting it down there, but they can get the items for free. Yeah. And so that's some yeah. of the stuff that goes down right. as well. Well, you talked about the cost of getting things down there. So those props don't turn uh, just yeah. because the wind is blowing. And, and I don't mean that facetiously. I mean it from a standpoint of it does take money and, and it does take a channel to, to get that happening. So well, uh, tell us a little bit about that. How are people tithing into the church and how are they, how are they funding you guys? And let's get some of that going on. Yeah, well, we're, we operate uh, with finances coming in a variety of ways. One, uh, there's just a number of individuals, um, a, few, a few foundations, uh, uh, churches and uh, and companies that will just donate to help cover our costs. So our viewers could could uh, get a hold of, you can go onto your website yep. and maybe take a look at some of those uh, venues for how to support. Yep. They can give to our general fund, they can give to uh, uh, help with our aircraft. We've um, Or we they could even go into their churches or, uh, or organizations and say, hey, this is a worthy cause to, like, let's bring this in. Let's put let's yeah. put some funds at this. And some, some of the churches actually support us on a monthly basis. Yeah. Um, and it's great um, to have that those funds coming in. Um, God has really blessed us. We own uh, all of our aircraft. Um, we are operating currently two turboprop DC-3s, and we do have a third one um, that we just recently got, and we'll talk about all that right. a little bit later. Good. Please do. Yeah. Um, and uh, but God has provided mm -hmm. the funds for those in our hangars. We own them debt-free, uh, and so we're excited. So that helps us keep the cost down uh, with people donating to that. Now the operation of the aircraft are actually covered by the donations that each of the groups that we work with help uh, share in the cost. It's called a recommended contribution for the people that travel back and forth or per pound by whatever shows up yeah, for them. And right. so they help to cover the cost. Now we keep it as low as we can and all the pilots, actually we don't pay them salaries. Right. So there's no cost for that. They actually raise their own support like a regular missionary would have to. That? People are familiar with wow. that where they've got individuals, churches and, and family members that 
pledge to give them so much per month, and that's what they live off of. And so it helps keep our costs down. Man, I you know I do I like slinging gear, but uh, I don't have an A and P, so <laughs> well, maybe uh, we'll get there one day. But um, you know, I uh, I just want to um, kind of wrap this up a little bit. We have about seven more minutes of, of talking, so uh, you know, what's the difference that this has made? That's really what I, w I was thinking about. It's like you've got this thing going on, you're you're doing all the, this good work, and you're seeing the result. I know you uh, guys have been blessed. That's clear. Yeah. But uh, but at the same time, you know, it's it's uh, you know, it's about being worked through. This isn't just you and some idea. This is yeah. a, this is a, a guidance that's happening, and what is the result on the backside? Tell me yeah. a little bit about that. Where, how's this going? What's going on down there that's making a difference? Well, a lot of times people will say, you know, is Haiti really changing? You know, right. is anything you're doing helping? You know, the earthquake hit. It, yeah. it, it, you know, reversed Haiti probably a couple of decades uh, just with the damage and Absolutely. everything. Absolutely, the infrastructure is crumbled. Yeah, to, to back and, to nothing again, and, and all that. But you know. There's, like I said, almost 500 organizations we're working with, and each of them are working in a different area. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we all believe that there's an importance in, in teaching them about who Jesus is. But there's also an importance of meeting their physical need. Sure. And so we just don't do humanitarian work because if we just taught them a better education so they could get a job and they lived a good life and they lived longer or they have better medical care, and they live longer or you know we feed them and keep them alive longer uh, and then they die then we've done a, a disservice because we believe there is an afterlife and the way to get to heaven is to trust in Jesus Christ and if we don't share that with them and we just make their life here longer and better we've done a, a disservice and they end up in eternity without without the Lord well that and, and the fact that it, when you're hungry you can't hear yes that, I always I've used that phrase I'm not sure who came up with it but they say an empty stomach has no ears. So if you're not going to feed them, they're not going to listen to what you're going to say. That's a fact. So we want to meet their physical needs and help them, but also tell them about the exciting news about Jesus Christ and eternity in heaven. So keep going with that because uh, show me, uh, tell me a story of an example where, where you just know that that's, we're, we're good. I know it because I saw it. What, yeah. Tell me about one of those. Well, I'm not sure if this is what you're looking for, but recently, you know, you just, you know, I'm just you, looking you can, for the success yeah. story. Let's well, you can go to our, our website. Mm -hmm. I think it's on there now. There's a video about the goats. Um, there's one ministry that we actually flew 18 goats down to Haiti, and they use these goats. They've got a special breed, special, you know, strong goat muscles or good wow. breed, and they breed them. And they also have some that produce a lot of milk. But they have this goat program that they give to young men, and you have to pass the certain test and and. Uh, to get the goat. They also have Bible classes for these young men. And this one guy, I forget his name, but he's on uh, the video that we just put out. Um, he uh, learned about Jesus. He accepted him. He's, he's following the Bible and, and all this. But he's also been a success story because he's taken that one goat, turned it into many goats that has been then turned into a cow. And, and then he's, he sold the cow and he's bought all these cement blocks and he's building his family, his extended family, a house because there was five of them living in this 10 wow. by 10 room um, made out of Love cardboard and, and whatever. Oh, yeah. But now he's building a house. But, you know, he's also loves the Lord and is trying to help other people. Yeah, you know, um, uh, we haven't uh, seen poor like uh, they have seen poor. You know, uh, the, the poorest man in our country would be wealthy by comparison uh, down there. Yeah. Uh, and it's not that they, they're... Uh, you know, it's 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 just a different uh, attitude. Yeah. It's um, not that they're lazy. Either. No, no, none of that. They're, it, they're stuck <clears throat> where they are. It's the poorest country in the whole Western Hemisphere. But I'm always impressed by the attitude. You know, whenever I meet them, w one, they're happy. They're they're uh, in, in you know to meet you yeah. uh, is what I mean. And that uh, you know generally uh, they they they're family people, and you know they're doing exactly what we're doing, just on a different scale. <laughs> you know, uh, but they definitely need those those uh, items to to survive and get. Uh, get out of that scenario and they will they've done it time and time again you know the other thing that um, I particularly like about Haitians are their art you know they they are the, some of the most artistic uh, graphically speaking as well as musically speaking and you know uh, they're, they're just uh, uh, so outgoing with that expression of uh, their happiness and colorful and yeah. colorful right you know yeah um, yeah they've done more with blue and orange than I could <laughs> ima have imagined right <laughs> yeah well let me tell you a little about how we're expanding I mean, we hope to go to Cuba someday uh, we had a planned flight earlier uh, in February but uh, 
The government down there uh, did not give us a written approval. We're looking to go to uh, Central America possibly with this third airplane. It was donated to us in 2015. Uh, it was a converted turbine DC-3, but it didn't have any engines still. Oh, yeah. The radios were missing, the gauges were missing, a ra uh, and uh, instruments. The wings were off of it and it was located in South Africa. Wow. But in the last two years, we were able to buy items and build it, put together, and we, we flew it um, to Florida last spring. Is it in Fort Pierce now? It is in oh, Fort I'm Pierce. I'm going to look at that. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, we're, uh, we're at the end of our time right now, and we're just wrapping up with the last, uh, uh, last one minute in this. And so I, I just want to reconnect with our audience about how they can reach you. What's the, what's the best way to, to get to, uh, is it the website? Yeah, the website. Missionaryflights.org. Um, that's right, missionaryflights.org. Uh, and uh, you can contact us, come visit us. We do have an annual family day where we give plane rides and free chicken barbecue lunch. So that's in March. So it's just passed, but next, next spring, come on, visit us. Man, I'm going to that. <laughs> Darn right. So we got, uh, I think we gave about 500 people plane rides in the DC-3. Well, you've just spent the last 30 minutes with Joe Karen, Kara Bench, and I'm John McElroy with the Florida Aviation Network, and I really appreciated being with you, Joe. It's been great. It's been great to be All here, right. too. Well, you've just uh, had a great vision of uh, what it's like to be a missionary pilot heading down into Hispaniola, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti in a turbine DC-3 uh, bringing mission work and critical supplies to that island. So I'm John McElroy for the Florida Aviation Network and we'll see you next time.